Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby, and welcome to my strange little YouTube channel. Today's- I should just get used to this. If this is your first time watching an Insane Scandals of Old Hollywood video from me, this always happens in one of these videos. Very Marilyn. I can deal with it. Today's video is another Insane Scandals of Old Hollywood. These are some of my favorite videos to do on my channel, and you guys seem to like them, so I thought it was about time to do another one. Today we are talking about three stories that prove that old Hollywood years ago is just as scandalous as Hollywood is today. So let's just get into it. A lot of people's New Year's Day consists of a hangover. Obviously expected due to the amount of drinking and partying from the night before, but for Cortland S. Dines, one New Year's Day consisted of something no one expected. In the year 1922, silent screen actress Mabel Normand found herself in the midst of a scandal, one where she was a suspect in a murder case. On February 1st, director William Desmond Taylor was found dead in his apartment with a gunshot wound in his back. Mabel was the last person to see him the night before, so it didn't look good on her part. She was eventually acquitted, but two years later, she found herself in the middle of another scandal. On New Year's Day, 1924, Mabel joined her good friends, actress Edna Perviance and Cortland S. Dines, an oil company promoter who was known in clubs in the Los Angeles area. After a bit of afternoon drinking, Mabel Norman's chauffeur came to pick her up at Cortland's apartment at 325B North Vermont Avenue, a little before 7 p.m. Mabel's chauffeur, 27-year-old Horace A. Greer, claims he was waiting for Norman for some time to pick her up and began feeling like she was somehow being kept captive in the apartment so he found a way in himself. Horace's story goes that when he got to the apartment, Mabel was extremely intoxicated and she did not want to go with him. She wanted to continue partying. Horace says that he finally convinced her to go with him and as they were leaving the apartment, Cortland became very violent and he threatened Horace, telling him that he was going to hit him over the head with a liquor bottle. And in self-defense, Horace took out a pistol from his pocket and shot Cortland three times. The pistol was a .25 caliber automatic that happened to be Mabel's that he slipped into his pocket earlier in the day. If you're familiar with a lot of old Hollywood cases, you know that the police were rarely ever called first. The group tried to help Cortland's bullet wounds the best that they could, but they soon realized that they should probably notify authorities. At around 8.20 p.m., Horace went to the Wilshire Police Department and turned himself in. Cortland lived through the incident, but everyone's stories of what had happened that night were all different, and due to the alcohol, Cortland, Mabel, and Edna couldn't remember much and their stories changed regularly. Edna, though, claimed that there was absolutely no reason for Horace to shoot Cortland, that there was no argument at all, and Cortland was simply sitting on the couch letting Mabel leave as she pleased. Cortland declined to appear in court to testify against Horace, claiming he was too drunk the day of the shooting and could not recall anything. Horace refused to testify on his own behalf because he said he didn't want to hurt Mabel. The newspapers, though, had an absolute field day with this story, mostly focusing on the clothing choices of Edna and Mabel on the day of the incident, claiming that they were lavishly attired. Newspaper reporters hounded Mabel, asking her if her race possibly did this because he was in love with her, which she laughed at and said that the man was simply insane. The two scandals greatly affected Mabel's career. Her popularity slowly declined, and over time, so did her health. She passed away on February 23rd, 1930, at the age of 37 from tuberculosis. Edna's appearances in films became less and less as well. She retired from film in 1927 and passed away on January 13th, 1958, from throat cancer at the age of 62. As for Cortland, he passed away at the age of 55 from a heart attack in his hometown of Denver, Colorado. But through the years, he rarely spoke at all about the incident to anyone. The next scandal is one of the best kept secrets of old Hollywood, and that is the secret daughter of actor Clark Gable and actress Loretta Young. Loretta Young was an Academy Award-winning actress and singer with a long-lasting career in showbiz, 
Clark Gable, in his prime, was known as the King of Hollywood, one of the biggest and most successful actors of all time, most known for his role as Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind. In the year 1935, Loretta and Clark were working on a film together called The Call of the Wild. Like many co-stars at the time, whether married or not, which Clark Gable was at the time, one thing led to another and Loretta became pregnant. Loretta was a devoted Roman Catholic and a scandal like this would absolutely destroy and tarnish the reputation of any two stars. So she made it her mission to keep this a secret from the public and make sure no one ever found out. Loretta went to Europe for many months, then came home to Venice, California, telling columnists that she was simply ill and needed rest, giving birth to her new baby girl on November 6, 1935. This baby's name was Judy. Judy, at eight months old, was placed in an orphanage. At 19 months old, she was retrieved from the orphanage by Loretta's mother. Loretta told the public that she adopted two children, but gave one of them back to its original mother in an attempt to make the adoption story sound more believable. In 1940, Loretta married a man named Thomas Lewis, and Judy took his surname, becoming Judy Lewis. There are no pictures of Judy before the age of two, and most early photos of her are of her wearing a bonnet to cover her ears. Why her ears, you ask? Because they stuck out and bared a striking resemblance to Clark Gables, so much that Loretta made her get surgery on them at seven years old. The doctor told them that this procedure would be extremely painful for Judy because she was so young, and advised them to wait a few years for the procedure, but Loretta insisted. Judy grew up not knowing who her father was and mother who would never publicly admit that she was in fact her own daughter. Everyone around her knew and never wanted to tell her about the truth. It wasn't until the age of 23 on the night before her wedding did her future husband tell her what everyone already seemed to know. Judy confronted her mother at the age of 31, years after Clark had passed away and Loretta finally came clean. It wasn't until I was 31 that I finally did asked my mother and did hear the truth from her. But by that time, my father had died. Judy wrote an autobiography titled Uncommon Knowledge in 1994, telling of her story and how the entire adoption tale was all a sham. Loretta did not speak to her for three years. Loretta Young passed away on August 12, 2000 at the age of 87. In her autobiography released after her death, she finally admitted to the public that Yes, Judy was her and Clark's daughter. Judy only met Clark once at the age of 15, having no idea that that was her father. As he left, he kissed her on the forehead. She said after she found out who he was, she would frequently watch his films, especially Gone with the Wind, claiming she would imagine herself as his fictional daughter in the film. Judy had her own career working in showbiz also with many TV appearances and passed away at the age of 76 from cancer on November 25th, 2011. This story though gets an even more heart-wrenching twist. It wasn't until Loretta and Judy both passed away did another detail about this entire story come out to the public. Loretta's daughter-in-law, Linda Lewis, said that Loretta would frequently watch Larry King live. And during an episode, they used the phrase, date rape. Loretta had no idea what this meant and asked Linda to explain. After trying to explain what the phrase meant to a lady in her 80s the best way she could, Loretta paused, her eyes got really wide, and she said, that's what happened between me and Clark. Loretta said that on the train back to Hollywood after filming, Clark made his way into her bunk and took advantage of her. Loretta said that yes, she was absolutely humiliated that night in 1935, but these were different times. Clark was a glorified man of Hollywood, someone you don't really say no to, and Loretta was always told to put on a good face. Judy, though, never found out about this. Loretta told Linda that she would never tell her daughter because, quote, it wouldn't help Judy. The last scandal is a little one, but I thought I would leave this video off on more of a lighthearted note. We're going to discuss one of the most popular photos of old Hollywood. 
the most famous side eye ever snapped on camera. The famous photo of Sophia Loren and Jane Mansfield taken in April of 1957 at Romanoff's in Beverly Hills is 60 years old this year and still has people talking. I mean, it even has a Wikipedia page. Italian actress Sophia Loren had skyrocketed to stardom in Europe and it was time for her to create a name in America. So Paramount put together a dinner party in 1957 to welcome Sophia to Hollywood. Jane Mansfield had some pretty successful films under her belt and had created a name for herself in Hollywood by that time. She was also known for loving attention. She was one of the most photographed people in Hollywood and she was also known for having wardrobe malfunctions that showed a little bit too much of her at times, which there's nothing wrong with that. Sophia was interviewed in 2014 by Entertainment Weekly about the event and she said, she came right for my table. She knew everyone was watching, she sat down, and now she was barely, listen, look at the picture. Where are my eyes? I'm staring at her nipples because I am afraid they are about to come onto my plate. In my face, you can see the fear. I'm so frightened that everything in her dress is going to blow, boom, and spill all over the table. There are plenty of other photos taken from the night, but Sophia claims that that is the photo, the one that shows how it really was, how genuinely scared she was that Jane was going to pop out of her dress at any moment. Sophia says that she is still asked quite often to sign the photo for fans, and she says she never does, mostly out of respect for Jane because she is not with us anymore. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that video and I have two other Insane Scandals of Old Hollywood videos which I will put down in the description if you guys want to check out. Definitely let me know what you thought about the scandals talked about in today's video and if there are any scandals you want me to talk about in future videos, definitely leave those down below in the comments. I read every single comment. If you're not already, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of my little YouTube family. I love you guys so much. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.